So today we have a 1987 Mercedes-Benz 560 SEL. Car's in uh, really good condition considering the age of the car. It's here for just a general check. The customer's taking on a trip somewhere. I think they said California. And uh, their major complaint was lack of heat out of the heater. So I've ran it up to operating temperature. I'm looking for the trouble light here. One sec. Okay, so I ran it up to operating temperature and there you can see the two heater hoses. The one on this side here, that one over there, is the inlet hose to the heater core and that is the return hose to the heater core. But it also has down inside here, behind this second firewall here, is a auxiliary pump and a valve what, which I would call a water control valve, but they call it a mono valve. And that smaller coolant pipe that you see right there goes off to the heated windshield. Uh, that valve, that mono valve, seems to pulsate occasionally. And when it does pulsate, we get good heat out of the heater. But when it stops pulsating, the heater cools off and the hose, hoses start to get a different temperature. So all the information I've read so far says that that valve needs to be de-energized for, uh, for heat and energized to shut off, basically. But apparently that valve can stick, and the information suggests that it can be removed by simply removing the four screws and pulling the valve out. That's the electrical connector for it, and the connector fell apart when I took it off, so I'll have to repair that after, but that's minor. So I think tomorrow, once this thing cools off, I'm going to uh, take that valve out and have a look at it. So there's a picture, a cutaway picture of that mono valve. And it has a description of how to check it here. And I've, I can put power and ground to it and it, and it uh, actually closes. But when you de-energize it, it opens. And it appears to be sticking occasionally. So like I said, the information suggests that you can simply remove the four screws on the top here and the valve internals will come out through the top. Obviously you have to uh, depressurize the cooling system and possibly lower the coolant level. So again, tomorrow once it's cooled off we'll have a look at that. So I removed the four screws from the top of that cover. There's the valve there. And there's a bit of corrosion oxidation inside here. I didn't realize it, but the top of this solenoid actually comes right through the top of this valve here. So you should be able to see it physically move. I didn't notice that before. Uh, we're going to have a look down inside here. It's mentioned something about there being a filter in there, and I don't see anything, but there's another white part down below. Uh, it doesn't look that bad, but there was some corrosion on the side of the shaft here. So I'm going to clean this all up, maybe put some dielectric grease in there, and reassemble it, see how it works. So there is actually a small screen in here, and it's somewhat clogged, and there is another portion of this valve here. So maybe it's the center portion that moves up and down, because the other part can't move inside the housing, it must be this piece here. Well. It seems to be spring-loaded, but I'm going to clean it all up. So on further investigation, you can see there's a diaphragm in here that's actually split, ripped open. I don't know if you can be able to see that, but that diaphragm on the bottom is, is torn. So we need a new one of these valves. So I'm going to look for parts availability. So I checked with the local parts distributors, no surprise, uh, no availability, even auto camping didn't have available parts, but did a search on Google and eBay and found a uh, remanufactured assembly, they're calling it a heater control valve, for $160 US, but I also found just, let's see if I can find it now, just the actual repair kit. No, it's not in there. Anyways, I did buy just the repair kit, which includes that solenoid piece that I had with the broken diaphragm. 
Let's see if I can find it. And I did order it. It's like $40 US. There it is there. And that's going to be actually less work to replace than changing the whole entire valve because that means taking off a bunch of hoses. The hoses look fine, but they're a little bit of a challenge to get to. So we're going to order the, I've ordered this control valve assembly. It's got a diaphragm and a new uh, screen in here. And we'll rebuild the one we have. I think that's going to be more cost effective. And it's coming out of New York, so it should be fairly quick to get it to Ryden's in, in the States. So the other problem this customer complained about is a uh, cruise control surging on deceleration. So I've got the air cleaner assembly off there, and this has got a Bosch mechanical fuel injection system. And the accelerator linkage is a huge Rube Goldberg conglomeration of linkages and rods. You can see the pivot here, lever, another lever, an eccentric, rods, lever, pivot, and this is the cruise servo assembly here. Um, I'm going to lubricate all the linkages up and do an oil change on them and then take it for a road test and see if that improves anything. I, do, I know there's a number of adjustments on these rods, but I'm sure it hasn't gone out of adjustment. Nobody's tampered, so we're going to just clean up all the linkages and lubricate them and see what happens. So I'm looking at the fan belts on this thing, and there are one, two, three, five. The first one there drives an air air pump. And I noticed when I started it up that there was a significant belt squeal. Now there's an electromagnetic clutch on the front of this air pump, but the air pump is seized. So if that clutch engages, this belt is going to have to slip. It's It's been slipping. So... My recommendation is to remove the air pump belt altogether because it's strictly for emissions. Um, the air conditioning compressor belt is in pretty decent shape, but it has to come off to get at the alternator belt. And my recommendation would be to change this alternator belt. It's pretty glazed, and that's kind of important. So we'll put a new alternator belt on it. We'll leave the air pump belt off temporarily because the, compre the, the front of this thing doesn't turn anyways and uh, we'll just reinstall the original air conditioning belt. The two power steering belts which are a matched pair seem to be good and, and snug and we don't have to disturb those to get at the the alternator assembly down there. And I've ordered engine oil for this thing because it calls for 2050 if you're operating in warm climates and that's where they're headed, California, so we're going to put 2050 in it.